What is going on guys, this is your boy Astrum Sensei and welcome to my new devlog series on this brand new game that I'm making which is a 2D turn based JRPG. I know, how are you making a JRPG when you are not even Japanese? Well, let me tell you that JRPGs are actually a soul and a genre rather than the nationality of the developer. JRPGs are honestly one of the reasons I'm a game developer now, so I decided as a tribute I'm gonna try to make one. And I know I can't make a 3D JRPG on a huge scale because, you know, the lack of assets doesn't help, so if I wanted to make a 3D RPG as I'm making now in Unreal, it would have to be a smaller scale story and a smaller scale world so i decided for this game i'm gonna be going with 2d so every few days you can expect one of these devlog videos i know that i started a devlog series back in may of last year i only made one video and honestly i just stopped working on that game after the video i wasn't satisfied with where it was going i felt like the game that i wanted to make was more story driven than the 2d platformer that i was making so I decided to stop the project back then and delay working on it and postpone it but now I feel that I'm ready so I started reorganizing the project as a 2d turn-based RPG which is going to be inspired by Final Fantasy 6 Persona and many other stuff that I'm not gonna mention yet. You know, every time I add new features to the game that are inspired by other games, I'm just gonna mention the other games that these things are inspired by. This time, it's not just concept art. I know that the last time I only showed three concepts and they weren't that good, honestly. <laughs> but this time, I redid the main character, I did the sprite art for walking for the main character, and I made sprites for the idle animations did some coding in unity which i'm a beginner in i'm very new to unity so i'm not very used to it i'm still following other people's tutorials but hopefully i should figure things out very soon and be doing almost everything for my project myself you know learning unity recently it's been a lot of fun it's much less clunky than unreal especially when you don't have the best equipment ever so yeah i've been really enjoying unity and I really like making 2D games in Unity and keeping the 3D stuff in Unreal and that is why I decided to go for Unity this time. So the things I'm going to be showing you in this video are the sprite animations, the character redesign and what I've coded into the game. There is more progress that I made to the game. I made a lot more concept art and some other sprites but I'm going to be saving them for other videos. So first of all let us take a look at the old version of the main character who was called Dragon Slayer Synthwave. Since then, I've actually changed his name to Dragon Slayer Kaiser, which is a normal person's name, no longer a code name. And his first name used to be Tyler, I decided to change that. I wanted to go with a generic name first, that's why I chose Tyler. But since then, I decided to go with a fictional world instead of a post apocalyptic real world. So I decided, hey, change the main character's name to something unusual and that is why I decided to change it and go with Kaiser. This is the old concept art. The armor, I don't think that's very well designed. I still like the color palette that I made back then. I stand by it. That is why the new version has a very similar design, but I decided to decrease the sci-fi tone. If you take a look at the new version, let us take a look. So this is the new version, very different, but at the same time, he's still the same character. You can see that he has modern clothing. The hair is no longer cut from the side. And that is because the story of this one starts before what I planned when I made the old version. So yeah, I decided to make him less experienced. I, I removed all of the scars. I removed the part of his hair that was gone. Let us take a look at him bit by bit and compare him to the old version. Let us put them side by side and see the differences. First of all, the outfit. I decided to go with trendy pants and a crop top, but I didn't want to change the colors drastically because basically the tone of the game, which is kind of lighthearted, but at the same time, it has its dark moments. I decided to to keep the light-hearted tone and decided that I'm gonna stick with the color palette. I designed it to have this neon vibe which is like a futuristic but still not too futuristic thing. There is a problem with the anatomy of the shoulders. I think they are too wide in the new version which is something I messed up. So you guys tell me what do you think of it? Is there a problem with the shoulders? Should I fix them in the concept art? 
or should I keep them the same? Please let me know. I know that artists can be like perfectionists and, you know, keep finding flaws in what they did. I don't know if I'm being too picky or not, but you guys can tell me. So yeah, as you can see, I almost kept the same design, but I changed it and made it to what I think is better. So now I want to show you the sprites that I made for the character and put them in Unity. I'm going to show you the sprites directly off of Unity and you can judge them yourself. So here we go. If you take a look now, you can see that he has idle breathing animations for when you are standing. I know that a lot of 2D games don't have idle animations, but I feel like it could breathe life into the game or into the scene and make it feel like the characters are actually there. And since I'm not trying to create a retro game, I decided to go for what I think 2D games would have evolved into. So that's what this project is. It's not a nostalgic thing or anything. It's just what I think 2D games should have evolved into if they were still what's normal. So if you take a look at the breathing animation, it's really nice. You have breathing animations for the left and for the right. It's the same one but flipped. And we have one for looking up and we have the walking animations which are down left right and up as you can see really neat and really clean animations i used three frames for the walking animations and two frames for the idle animations i made the animations in a program called clip studio paint pro which is on my iPad. I actually made them with the iPad Pro. This video is not sponsored by Apple, so don't buy an app <laughs> iPad. No, really. The iPad is a really useful tool for game development. I do all my concept art in there, and I do all of the sprites in there and the tile sets. I, I made my first tile set, but I'm not gonna be showing you. What's in Unity is only a placeholder that I downloaded off of Open Game Art. I'm definitely gonna have it removed. I only added it to show you the progress that I've been making. So yeah, we have these sprites, which are very, very cool, I think. I wanna actually show you the old versions of these sprites, which match the old character design. I made idle run attacking and shooting. I'm only gonna show you the idle and run because the attacking and shooting weren't finished. So here we go. There were actually sprites for a side scroller and if you take a look here you can see them. They also look okay. The, the running animation is really smooth but it was a nightmare to make. It had a lot of frames and it was my first time doing pixel art animations so I kind of overdid what I did with it and when it was time to create other animations they also needed more frames and it was very detailed and the character had a lot of details was frustrated and that's part of why I stopped working on the side scroller version of this game so I'm not gonna be using those sadly although they look okay I'm gonna be sticking with the new art style and the top-down version of them. So as I said before, along with the sprites, I also made some progress with the coding. First thing I did was the character movement. As you can see, we can move up, down, left, right, and we can move diagonally. Although the diagonal movement doesn't have animations, I'm not sure if I should keep it or not. I mean, Stardew Valley has it, but I don't know. I feel like it should have its own animations, but I don't want to make those. So you guys let me know, is it okay to do it or not? I'm not sure really. And other than that, we have collision, which I don't have on this map, sadly. But yeah, you can just collide with stuff. And when you collide with stuff, you don't really um, get stuck or anything. So it works perfectly. Other than the character movement, what I coded is the camera system which is a normal camera that follows the player. We can zoom in and zoom out however we want based on the scene. If you have borders for your level, so where the level ends, the camera stops moving and the character can keep moving and you can just walk out. There should be an invisible wall there, but hey, it works and that's great. So as you can see, we have constraints for the camera on each side of the map so that it doesn't keep moving where we want it to be. Other than that, I figured out how to do the tile sets and how to put them in the engine. 
These aren't mine as I mentioned before, but yeah, I just needed to mention that. One other thing I did is the transition between maps. It's not finished, so there's no fading in and out between the transitions, but if we walk through this door, you can see that we can move to another map, which is this upper castle thing, and if we walk back, we can move back here, and you know, the way this works is basically, we have this area exit thing, which when you touch, it takes you to the other map, and we have this area entrance thing, which is when you're back to the map, or when you enter the map, this is where you enter. So I think this is everything that I wanted to show you, but before I leave you off, I actually want to discuss the project. So the game that I'm making, it's now called New Dragon Slayer, it's still a working title, that's not the final name of the game, and it's about a post-apocalyptic world that was attacked by dragons years ago, hundreds of years ago, and now humans have enhanced themselves and made more technology so that they can fight back against the dragons and they have those people called dragon slayers who are like police guys or detectives that investigate and fight dragons so the game is kind of like a drama between the dragon slayers against the dragons which is set in a slightly retro futuristic world with cyberpunk themes although i decided to move away from the cyberpunk themes a little bit and go with a more modern approach but it still feels like an 80s futuristic kind of thing i actually designed and sketched a lot of the characters and i'm really looking forward to showing you but as i said before i'm gonna leave it for later so i'm really hoping you guys are looking forward to the game and you are looking forward to seeing more progress as we go if you guys have enjoyed the video and you would like to see more please make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel super special thanks to my patrons because without them i wouldn't be working on this game and see you next time take care have a great day and bye